Welcome back to my channel and today we have the Prusa Mark 3S. If you don't know what the Prusa Mark 3S, it's the 3D printer and today I'm going to be putting this together. It's a long 9 hours, I have my Red Bull, and endless source of coffee. So let's go ahead and hop into it and build this thing. And I hope you guys enjoy this time last video. For beginners, building a 3D printer from scratch with no experience will be a daunting task. However, it's not impossible. Here are some tips and tricks that I wish I knew when I began. First, forget the printed manual. Go straight for the online manual. If you find something unclear, there are always Q&A for each step. This makes it convenient to overcome any difficult building obstacle. Second, although Prusa spends a lot of time placing the Hasbro Bear on the smooth PEI board, to show your progress through the build, just simply avoid it. These bears will grease up the PEI board and it just makes the print adhesions more difficult. Wash your PEI board thoroughly with soap and water to remove any grease. This will definitely affect your bed adhesion. Third, on the topic of cleaning and washing, 
Use a Scotts Brite pad to gently brush and your smooth and textured PEI board. Trust me on this. Now I know that the thought of scruffing up your newly minted 3D proof strip printer might be atrocious, but the Scotts Brite pad will gently rough up your board to provide better adhesion for all your prints. And it definitely worked in my case. So now you have your printer fully assembled, it's time to face the dreaded self-test and XYZ calibration test to get that final perpendicular congratulations message. When I performed my very first self-test, my printer failed the x-axis length. You'll find that most of these self-test errors are attributed to users skipping certain sections in the build and referring to Google will be your best bet to find your particular answer. And for my particular x-axis length error, it was due to an over-tightening of the x carriage assembly. This made it a little bit difficult for the x-axis to move left and right. It didn't take much to fail this test, so be warned. For the XYZ calibration, if you don't have an accurate caliber to measure out the 1mm difference between the nozzle and pinda, just keep pushing the pinda down until you pass. Once you're able to pass the XYZ calibration, go ahead and print yourself a pinda calibration tool. I'll leave a link below where you can find this particular pinda tool. This tool made a tremendous difference in the calibration, especially for my PET G filament. It's something I would definitely keep around whenever I change out my nozzle in the future. Last, we all know how important it is getting the first layer correct by adjusting the Z offset value. The best trick I've found, at least as a starting point, is to continue lowering your Z offset value and feel the filament on your board. If you can gently move the filament on the board, you need to continue lowering your Z value. You'll start to know when you're getting close to your golden Z value when you can't move the filament on the board. That means you got good adhesion. And from there, it's about the micro adjustment until you get the correct square outlay at the end. Once you pass all your self tests and calibration, you're free to print your Benchy. Now that was a lot of fun and I enjoyed the engineering and the time that went into building this printer. 
And I spent close to 11 hours assembling the printer and it was certainly a lot of fun. Now, I'm really tired and I have kids and wife to get back to somewhere. I have to clean off the oil off my laptop. And pretty much that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. If you have any comments, suggestions, or thoughts, leave in the section below. Peace out.